So at the start of 2024, it really seemed like many PCs like this one right here, rocking a Ryzen 7 5700U, were kind of at the end of their life. While they're still widely available in the $200 to $300 price range, the lack of driver support for these APUs makes it hard to recommend for anybody that would want to do anything that would require a GPU in a meaningful capacity. They make great home PCs, but they don't exactly have a lot of power in terms of gaming. But 2024 has proven to be a very interesting year because of the fact that frame generation has really taken off. Since FSR 3 has hardware agnostic frame generation, I want to see if this system can actually keep up in 2024 thanks to this new technology. One thing though is that for this system a very important aspect is that it has 32 gigabytes of RAM. If you want to continue to use these older APUs in 2024 you're gonna have to upgrade your RAM. 16 gigabytes just is not enough especially because of the fact that the APU in here means that both the CPU and GPU are competing for RAM resources. Sources. 32 gigabytes gives you more than enough headroom that both parts are able to breathe. A lot of the times you're going to run into issues with the things taking forever to load or stutters that would just be avoided if you had 32 gigabytes of RAM. But let's actually see what a bunch of games that have FSR 3 frame generation end up doing on this system. So the first game that I took a look at is Black Myth Wukong. You're running with the built-in benchmark. The game defaulted to a setting of all of the lowest graphic settings, which is expected here. And it also set a upscale resolution target of 50%. So we are at 50% of 1080p being upscaled back up to 1080p. And most importantly, we do have frame generation running here. Now, it should be said that if you go based off of what AMD recommends off of their own website for frame generation you want to have at least a 60 fps average in a game before enabling frame generation to get the best experience that's why my initial expectation was that frame generation was really not going to be anything that great for really low-end hardware like this but what i've found in my testing is that what enabling frame generation ends up doing is it ends up leveling out your frame times to the point where it makes games actually playable on this hardware in a way that you kind of just did not expect and as you can see here with frame generation enabled we are getting a great result in both our one percent lows and our fps average of course this is just a built-in benchmark but as i've found in my testing the built-in benchmark does a pretty great job of giving you accurate results when you're actually playing the game keep in mind though that we are using some really aggressive fsr settings and because of the low fps you're going to notice a lot more ghosting but more than anything i'm just impressed that a brand new title is running this well on hardware that's this old of course black myth wukong is kind of an exception more than the expectation for everything as you can see here with star wars outlaws a brand new title from ubisoft that also has frame generation even with the most aggressive fsr setting and frame generation on we just cannot get a playable experience here and because the fps is so low you can really notice the ghosting that ends up happening from fsr as you move around again the most ideal experience for frame generation is to have as high of an fps as possible but for the lower end of the market that's just not really a realistic expectation but here we are still seeing that it has the potential to help out at least in some titles but clearly it's not going to help with everything and this kind of carries over into avatar as you can see even with the most aggressive graphic settings we just cannot get a playable experience out of this frame generation or not there is no salvaging this game on here so it's definitely pretty inconsistent it really isn't going to do any miracles when it comes to making games that are just poorly optimized or just extremely demanding run on extremely low-end hardware ghost of tsushima is another title that actually ended up getting an update that lets you use frame generation in this and it's one of the titles where i've seen it have the most benefit on low-end hardware while here it's not getting us above 60 
50. It does overall smooth out the frame times to the point where it's a really pleasant gaming experience. It doesn't look amazing. We have to, again, get very aggressive with our FSR setting, and we have to use frame generation just to get this to a barely passable FPS. But the point is, is we can do that in an APU that is extremely cheap and has been around now for a long time. You have to understand that APUs used to really struggle with AAA titles from the year that they released, let alone AAA titles that released three plus years after the product's initial launch. And while again, visually, it doesn't look incredible, if you're on a system with this APU from a couple of years ago, you still have the potential to play these brand new games without having to shell out money for a brand new system. Games are expensive enough. You don't really want the added hardware costs just to continue to play them. After seeing the results in Ghost of Tsushima, I was really hoping that Spider-Man would end up giving a better result than this. While it was decent enough in terms of playability, the 1% lows were pretty disappointing. And at this low of an FPS, the ghosting really becomes a lot more noticeable, a lot harder to ignore. That said though, you can actually get away with playing the game, though I can't really say that it's the worst thing in the world. It's just not an incredible result. Though it does continue the trend of these older console ports being great performers on these older APUs even though they released more recently. And the last game that I could actually download right now that supports FSR 3 is Lords of the Fallen here. And unfortunately the performance was just a disaster. The FPS average wasn't great but those 1% lows were absolutely abysmal. So frame generation or not this wasn't great. And it really just kind of proves that frame generation is not this magic bullet that will be the savior of older hardware like this in every single title. So after trying all that, what do I think about frame generation? Well, it's definitely interesting technology. I think that what it has done is it's opened up the opportunity for hardware like this to age a little bit more gracefully. Thanks to the rise of indie games and the pretty massive amount of development that has happened with emulation, older hardware is able to stay more relevant in terms of gaming now more than ever before. And while we are in a worrying situation where hardware development itself is stagnating to the point where companies have to spend billions of dollars to squeeze out single digit performance increases, as a consequence of that, we have seen some pretty major development happen in terms of technology that is made to be workarounds for this stagnation in performance. And Nvidia having the lead that they have in the market, they essentially hardware locked these new developments like DLSS and like frame generation to specific generations of hardware. But since AMD is playing catch up here, they're a lot more open about their approach. And because of that, everyone benefits from the development that was put into FSR 3. I will say that a lot of these titles are very brutal to look at on larger displays. I had an easier time playing a lot of these games on the preview window in OBS more than actually on the display that they were hooked up up to. But it does make me think that handhelds based off of these APUs would have aged surprisingly well. I mean, this at 720p with this technology on a smaller display would be pretty killer if the price for the hardware was right. I think if anything, the biggest winner in all of this is probably Valve. The investment that they made in going with an RDNA 2 8 core GPU with the development of technology like FSR 3, it's kind of crazy how lucky they got in terms of all of that because it's tech like this that's going to keep the first generation of steam deck relevant for a lot longer than anyone realistically would have expected now do i think that zen 2 mini pcs are worth getting in 2024 it's hard to say it really depends on your regional pricing if there is a drastic gap between a zen 2 or zen 3 mini pc and something based off of rdna then at least this tech does make it pretty relevant and if you're looking to play esports titles or games like Roblox. You can do that on here for really, really cheap. There's a lot to be said about that, but I will say that 32 gigabytes of RAM is practically necessary if you're looking to play any kind of AAA titles. I mean, just look at the RAM utilization in some of the games that we played here. I really do wish that AMD would let hardware this old use their generic implementation of frame generation, but they're even trying to play the hardware locking game. I think that overall, it's interesting technology, and I'm going to be looking forward to it because 
becoming a little bit more prevalent. I want to see where this hardware is going to look by the end of 2025 because these APUs really just seem to be immortal. They just will not die. Are they winning any gold medals in the year of 2024? No, they're not, but they still refuse to retire. They still show up to the race. And that more than anything is the impressive part here. But anyway, anyways, let me know what you guys think of frame generation. Do you use it? Is it technology that interests you at all? Do you think it's a gimmick? I'd love to know your opinion on that. I'll catch you guys in the next one.